Hey, what's up? I'm Al Cox. I play games, make games, and everything in between. And today, we're doing an inside look into ISO Jump Fly. Okay, okay, so ISO Jump Slide has been on my checkout list for a while. What I find most fascinating about this, actually, before I start talking all about it, let's just take a look. Here we go. Bam, little dude. Uh, uh, and dead. Uh, so, this has one of the, ooh, and a double jump? Shit. So there's a lot of stuff going on here, and I think what Buildbox is really good at can be explained in this in this preset. This preset has multiple abilities. This, this character can slide, jump, slide, jump, and du double jump even. And it's a combination of, you know, before you can jump, you actually slide. Being able to use these mechanics in a hyper-casual way will push your games forward. Whenever I make a game, I generally just try to have one tapping. You can even do two tappings, but some people like to have multiple buttons, and, and I'm not about that. I'm a minimalist. I have like seven t-shirts total, and that's all I ever need, like two shorts and two pants. But now I'm just telling you about my clothes. So minimal, I think, is the key, and this, you know, ISO Jump takes care of a bunch of that. And I'm actually surprised to just see one button here, one character button does all of this? Damn. This character button must be like super powerful. So there's just character button right there. That's what it is. But let's go take a look at the character then because I, I want to know everything. Here's a character. Let's take a look at him. Isometric image. But let's take a look because okay, so we got the defeated animation here. And essentially all these kind of shoot out. Here we can see that they all have different speed because it's dash, dash, dash. I'm just gonna actually go ahead and make this bigger. Let's see what else we got here. Speed, force, jump force, jump timeout, jump counter. Jump counter is at zero. I thought jump counter was at two because there was a double jump. I wanna take a look at the, how many jumps can be made before touching the ground. Note, this was the incorrect previous version. So the jump counter is at zero, but you can jump twice. So a little confusing. It's probably more in the advanced move. Okay, here we go, button character. Ooh, there's a ghost jump element. I haven't seen one of these before. I don't usually mess with Ghost Jump. Let's take a look at what Ghost Jump is. Ghost Jump, typically used for isometric games. Okay, yeah, yeah, no, I, I remember doing a tutorial. So Ghost Jump is just like where it lands compared to where see it land and where it actually lands. In isometric games, these can be off a little bit. So this kind of helps keep everything smooth. And then here we go, Jump Count is at two. Okay, so it looks like this is kind of just taking over um, from what the original character display settings are. Okay, so that's a double jump, but still I'm not seeing the, the flatness. Okay, here we go. We got another advanced move. Uh, mathematical replace animation move. So this is on the start. Okay, so here we got here. This is the shadow. Oh, this is cool. So in, what is this? The ghost jump feature. Okay, so I didn't know this. In the ghost jump, you have the stats for the character. And you add a ground element because, of course, it's in the air. Now I'm going to take a look. And I like how it spins, and, I, and I'm not sure how that happens. Um, I'm not also not sure where the character becomes flat. It's located. It's got to be here somewhere, right? Because we got platforms, enemies, effects. Okay, so and then we have these. And I actually kind of want to make a third level, so let's just go ahead and do this. So this is at a rotation of negative 15, so I have to be observant of that because this is an isometric game. Oh shit, I feel like that's kind of what I was trying to avoid. Okay, boom. Okay, so there's the character. This is where it cool but needs to move a little bit lower. Move it here. It seems like hopefully maybe the character can squeeze in between there. How does the character squeeze? Oh, we don't know yet. Yeah. Oh shit, no. Ooh, almost made it. I just kind of want to see if I can do it. Oh, you know what? You see that circle? That circle is the jump. And let's go into the character. And where's the jump? Oh, this is, I missed, did I, was this here before and I just completely missed it? So this is the advanced move that I've been wanting to figure out. And it looks like, yeah, just with linear velocity, everything stays the same. And it's Get small, so this is where it's at. And then the activate on release. Okay, so I see. So it's like utilizing the activate on release. And let me take the, take a look at the ghost jump. So I suspect the ghost jump means that the character doesn't really jump, maybe? Take a look. Oh, uh, collision shape. Yes, yeah, so here's the collision shape. But when the character jumps, you saw that the collision shape turns into a circle. See that? 
And, oh, and there's a collision chip right there. Okay, so it's right there. So, oh, well, that, that was just because I, that was the wrong because I used duck. Collision shape goes down, and jumping makes the collision shape a circle. Ah, see, isometric games. I'm just bad at it. This is why I don't. <laughs> sure, okay. Duck. So, so see the collision shape of the character. So where? So now I'm just trying to find the collision shape of the character that's a circle when the character is in the air. And I would like that. Let's just go um, flat. So this is, an, oh yeah, this is an advanced move and I just called it flat, but it's cool because the advanced moves also have collision shape. So when you're doing an advanced move, like the advanced move could be anything, um, a swipe, a button, whatever. You can also change the collision shape, which is pretty magical. Zero timeout, activate on release. This is it. Here it is, oh my god, where was I looking? Okay, this is it, this is this is a dude, and I, I just need to move this up. Oh my god, it's not moving up. Oh, it doesn't want to move up. Okay, so I'm gonna try a polygon. Essentially, check this out. This this is a good little tip. You waited here, uh, you made it here with me looking for the collision, and it was right there in the ghost jump, which is where it was the whole time, and I, I just missed it. Okay, so here it is, and you see how this is in the middle, okay? Zero, zero, that's how I know it's in the middle. And the collision shape, now this was up here, previously, and you cannot move it any higher because of where the current uh, character is. You just can't, you see this little shape that says, hey, you can't move it up anymore. Luckily, I'm a genius and I know how to get around that, so let's take a look. So what you do is you just take the actual shape and you move it up, let's move it up, I don't wanna move it up. So now it's up 150. And now this is just completely off, so I just go ahead and move this up here. Now, the collision editor has it up here, and the original character is here, so now I just move the character back. Okay, so now the character is back to zero, zero, and the collision editor is way up here. Now you have to be careful not to touch it because the collision editor is higher than it wants to be. I'm better at these. Yeah. See? Although to be fair, the, the biggest problem with this, and I'll, I'll just show you right now, is, oh wait, no. No, there is no problem. That was a solution. So finding that ghost and then moving the collision editor around, that was great. I mean, think, I was very curious on how this was set up and now I know. I know that in the character you have advanced moves that you adjust the collision shape and you do this again, again specifically because it's isometric. You adjust the collision shape so when you press the button, the collision shape is smaller and you avoid the things above. Why I made him duck. And then the ghost jump, which again is specific to isometric games, also has a collision shape that you can adjust. And I showed you a little tip on how to move the collision shape higher than you want it, how to move the collision shape higher than BuildBox will let you. Uh, just a quick little hack. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.